Hi, uh, my name is Sonia, um, and uh, I'll be talking about the book that we've designed recently, um, which is about uh, history of food photography for Aperture in New York. Um, uh, just a bit about myself. I am a designer um, and art director living in London. This is uh, our studio, and um, I have a small team, and we work on a variety of projects, um, uh, books, magazines, branding, websites, and packaging. Um, just a bit where I come from, um, I was raised in Siberia, in Russia. It's just there. Uh, my family immigrated to San Francisco in 1989, and I studied in San Francisco. And afterwards, I was thinking, oh, you know, maybe the state is not my cup of tea. And I came to London to find the dream job. Uh, I loved the work that was produced in London. It was so attractive to me. And I also liked the diversity of it. And <clears throat> when I got here, I just loved it. Um, I worked with uh, Vince Frost and afterwards Kernelbull before I went on to art direct and design books for Fiden Press in 2005, um, where I stayed for six years. This was my studio in uh, or office at Fiden. And at the time, Alan Fletcher was creative director, and it was amazing to um, be able to speak with him and to, he was sort of a mentor. So that was a real perk of the job. And at Fiden, I had an opportunity to design for books for artists that I really loved. And one of my first books, my, actually my first book um, that uh, I got to design was an 800 page monograph about Nobuyo Araki. Uh, he's a Japanese photographer, a very prolific one, and it was just uh, unbelievable that I got to do it. Um, the book contained personal texts translated into English for the first time. And um, uh, in this limited edition, I was able to use special papers to portray the playfulness of his personality. Um, another highlight um, in those six years was that uh, I learned to experiment with formats and think beyond a standard book um, object. Uh, so in 2010, I designed this book called Creamier. It's a curated collection of 100 emerging artists. And um, because it was about new artists, uh, I thought of it as making news, and, uh, which led me to the idea of a newspaper. Uh, and so I modeled it on Financial Times, uh, which was slightly ironic because we were in the middle of a major recession. Um, and being a newspaper rather than a hardbound book, it was considerably cheaper. Um, and I thought that people would rather buy magazines and read online about new artists. Um, so the content of this nature was more suited for this format. I could also make images really large and not to worry, not worry about such uh, about space, uh, whether I can fit everything in. Um, uh, this book was awarded with a Grand Prix at the Tokyo Type Directors Club, um, which was really nice. I worked on a variety of books, um, for example, on subject of sculpture. Um, here I took the idea of three-dimensional aspect of sculpture and um, created a paper alphabet um, cut out out of a single sheet of paper. We photographed uh, all the different uh, type setting and with my husband, who's a photographer, Ed Park, and that was a really nice project to work on. Uh, another good project was uh, Younger Than Jesus Artist Directory, and because it's an artist directory, I made it look like yellow pages. Um, it was printed on the same paper as a phone book would be, and I used the exact same typeface that Matthew Carter designed for AT&T. Uh, six years ago, I was invited to redesign Freeze magazine. Uh, it's a contemporary art magazine. Um, and it was time to sort of move on from Fiden and, and become more independent. Uh, it was a real new environment and a, a challenge. I've never designed a magazine before, and I don't know how they trusted me with it. but. Um, I think the ability to edit images and 
um, make them look really presentable. Um, maybe that was the attraction. Um, I loved working with imagery and typography at a faster pace. Um, it's a different game to um, book design. It was a really incredible experience to work with a team of editors, and I learned a lot from them. Um, some of the covers that uh, we did. And at the time, I also started to learn how to work with digital. Um, uh, so I directed the magazine that was applied to, to an app, so it was a digital magazine. Um, Free started a new art fair, which was about artworks that ranged from ancient icons to 20th century art. Um, and I have designed a magazine for this fair, which was about looking at art of the past through a contemporary lens. So uh, we just literally cut out uh, a, a viewing hole in the front cover, uh, which then revealed an image inside. Um, so this would be what you would see on the first page. And it was really important to me to make this look really modern as a contrast to the content. Um, uh, so I, in terms of typography, I thought, what in typography world, who is the master? Which typeface is the master? And Helvetica came to mind. So I set the entire magazine in Haas Grotesque, which is the original version of Helvetica before digitalization. And so um, while I was working with Freeze, I started to do work and develop relationships with clients like Cartier Foundation, Aperture, Hauser and & Wirth, and Gagosian. Um, the position was initially four days a week, and then it became two days a week. So I had the opportunity to do other things uh, on my own. Uh, so one year ago, I left Freeze Magazine to concentrate on my own practice. And we are proud to work with interesting clients, brilliant content, and we are continuing to grow. So Aperture is a client that I started to work with um, while I was still at Freeze. And uh, when they said that there will be you know, a new project about food photography, we got really excited. And, and uh, food is so central to our lives. Uh, we have great personal memories associated with food. Um, when I was a girl, I used to look through my grandmother's cookbooks <coughs> uh, in Soviet Union and was mesmerized by the colorful images and illustrations and just spent hours looking at them. So when this project came in, we immediately started to look at vintage cookbooks, looking for references and trying to understand how we can take inspiration from it. It was really good fun. Um, as you can see, it's really kitschy. Um, the typography is wild. Uh, this was one of my favorites. <laughs> I'm just wondering who, <laughs> you know, do you just get drunk and put, put the casserole in the oven, or how does it work? Um, it had very strange color combinations. You know, just really weird. Um, and we loved that. Um, so our first initial reaction was, let's make something like that, and it will be really fun. Until we realized that, you know, wait a minute, let's look at the content. Is it really going to be appropriate for all of the images? Uh, is it going to be strange? Uh, so looking at the content, the images really vary. Um, and the chronology covers a long time period. We're really looking at the development of food photography. And whilst we have images like this, we, we also have images like this. So this was a real kind of stopping point and scratching our heads a bit. Um, you know, we have Wolfgang Tillmans. We have Edward Weston. Helmut Newton. Some images are not really only about food, but it's about society. That's Martin Parr. 
Tim Walker. Images that are part of contemporary art. This is Fitchley and Weiss, Sarah Lucas, and fashion. So this stopped us on our, in our tracks, and we sort of made a diversion, and we thought maybe there's another route to this, but um, we started looking at still life, and I remembered this still life in Matisse, um, it's just incredible color, uh, the flatness of it is just fantastically so modern. The patterns, the just love how flat it is. And we really wanted to, we didn't know what we were looking for, but I remember looking at this towel and, and connecting it with this reference. And I were sort of looking at making patterns, like tablecloth patterns. Um, and so we tried a few things which sort of looks good, but then I think the real um, objection to it was that um, the book is full of imagery and we would be creating yet another image that would decorate the book. Um, and so we went back to the idea of typography. Uh, this was one of the books that was actually part of the content. Um, and I looked at that book and I said, you know, how do we find a way to create a feeling of the past, but in a modern way? Even though this cover was um, from 1903, there's something really modern about it. The way that the type sits on the plain color, this gave us um, an idea how we could find a balance between modern and vintage atmosphere. Um, the letters, are, the letter forms are interesting in themselves, and so you don't really need other bits and bobs, you know, patterns or decoration. Um, we thought this type specimen book was really inspiring and it just was so powerful, um, the color of it, the, uh, everything. Um, and the story goes that this, book, this specimen book belonged to Jan Chihold and then found its way to Paul Rand. So it was like an added interesting fact. But we loved it and we basically got inspired by it and we tried to use striking type on a mustard color paper. Uh, and we looked for revival typefaces that were influenced heavily by the past. Uh, some of them were Victorian typefaces, but they were still done, you know, last year. So it, it still had a modern sort of feel to, to it. Um, this is just kind of outtakes and things that we didn't go for. So in the end, um, I really fell in love with this typeface, which sort of also plays on the idea of a feast for the eyes. You're sort of looking at it and it sort of plays with the, with the geometry of it or how you perceive it. Um, so it has a double meaning in a way. Um, we presented this as the front cover type only option and the publisher felt that this book was aimed at a much wider audience and insisted on using an image. Um, I was upset but it's the usual story, I'm kind of used to it now. Um, so we inset an Irving Penn image into the cover and uh, with a very modest quiet type and moved the bold uh, fancy type on the back. This way, we didn't have to give it up. And um, it's a bit strange to have a title on the back, but, you know, take, looking, looking at all these cookbooks, I think it's acceptable to take inspiration. Um, so as a result, we had quite a palette of elements, a lot of typefaces, I think four in total, but they don't conflict with each other. I think they're kind of in balance or complement each other. And I think it may be to do with, um, otherwise, other than that, the uh, layout is quite minimal. And for that reason, I think it works. So in, inside, there are sort of additional 
flourishy typefaces, um, but I think they work well. So yeah, really nice to have such variety of material. I love that. Um, I think this one is a good one to end on. Thank you very much.